If you're anything like me, you're already using AI to code much faster than you would if you were to write everything by hand. But if that's what you're doing, you're probably spending a lot of time waiting for the AI to generate your code so that you can review it and provide further instructions. Well, I just figured out a way to run two cursor agents at the same time on the same code base. Let me show you my new approach and then I'll show you how to set it up on your own computer. So I have this game center application and some of these games are implemented, but others are not. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask cursor, please go ahead and implement the Tetris game and make sure it's integrated with this main file. I'll make that request and then I'm gonna switch over to a separate desktop and over here I'm gonna ask, Please go ahead and implement the Minesweeper game and make sure it's integrated with this main file. I'll go ahead and submit this request. And now we got two cursor agents working in parallel. So if I flip back over to this one and we'll take a look in the UI, now we have a game of Tetris. There we go. And now if I flip back over to the other screen, over here on this screen, we have a working game of Minesweeper. So you can see that we build both of these games in parallel at the same time. So how is this possible? And how do we make sure that the cursor agents don't just trample over each other's files? Well, it really relies on version control. And today I'll show you how I achieve this effect using GitHub. And I created this diagram to help you visualize what's actually happening. So even if you're not super familiar with the tool, hopefully this will help you understand. So GitHub is a version control system, and the purpose of that is to allow you to work on different versions of your code. And so we have different branches that contain those different versions of the code. And you'll generally have professional teams use these different branches so that multiple developers can work on separate features all at the same time. What happens after they're finished is that those branches get merged into the main branch. And what we're doing here is essentially replicating that process, but using AI agents instead of other developers. So we have our GitHub repo and we have a few different branches in it. We have the main branch, which is gonna be the true version of our code. And then we're gonna have two working branches, which the AI agents are going to be working on separate features in. What this is gonna do is actually ensure that the AI agents never interfere with each other and never overwrite any of the files that they're working on. To achieve this effect on a single computer, we're gonna use what's called Git work trees, which allows you to put different Git branches into separate folders on your computer. So essentially, we have these two different branches and they're gonna go into separate folders on our computer so that these separate agents can then work in those folders. Okay. So let me show you how to actually set that up from GitHub. I'll show you from scratch with a new repository and then we'll have two agents actually implement a few features. So I'm over here on GitHub. I'm gonna create a new repository and we'll call it Game Center. I'll go ahead and leave it as public, create the repository. Okay, now I'm gonna clone this repository to my computer so I can put some initial code in the main branch. I'm heading over to Cursor and over here, I have a new window. I'm gonna click clone repo and I'm gonna clone from GitHub. And if you haven't done this before, it might ask you to like sign in with GitHub and put in a code. It should be totally fine. It just allows cursor to communicate with GitHub directly. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this game center. I'm just gonna add it to my Git folder. All right, and we'll open it. All right, here we go. We got Game Center and we're looking at the main branch because that's the only branch that we have right now. Now to make things a little bit easier for me, I'm gonna go ahead and copy my Vite React Chad CN demo into this folder. And you can actually do the same thing because I have this repository published publicly on my GitHub profiles. So I have a link in the description where you can copy this code as well. I'm just gonna paste all of those files into the Game Center folder and you see them appear over here. I'm gonna go ahead and just run npm install to make sure that this is working and then we'll push it to our main branch. Okay, I do npm run dev. And here we go, we got this super basic site I created in a separate video. 
I'm going to go ahead and replace this with a game center sort of view. By the way, check this out. I'm going to go ahead and make the request with my voice. And I realize you can do this on Windows just by pressing Windows H and it's going to start transcribing whatever you're saying. And on a Mac, you can just press the function key twice. So you don't even need a special software. It'll just start transcribing your voice and putting text into wherever you have your cursor at. We are currently looking at a template repository and we want to completely gut and replace this with a game center sort of application that will have games like tic-tac-toe, memory, and so on. Can you please implement a basic shell for this sort of repository? Oh, and we're going to want to use the composer agent. Okay, looks like it's finished with the game. <laughs> looks like we got these random images here. Um, let's see if we can play tic-tac-toe. Okay. All right, so it looks like this is working. Let me just remove these images real quick, and then I'm going to go ahead and commit it to our main branch. There we go. That looks a little better. Okay, I'll go ahead and accept all. And I'm going to go ahead and use git on the command line to push this to the main branch. So if you don't have git installed on the command line, I recommend that you get the git client. And this will allow you to use these work trees in a pretty straightforward way. I haven't figured out how to use it with the GitHub desktop, which I actually usually use because I just find it simple and intuitive. But if you get the GitHub command line interface, it'll be easier to set up this whole work tree and separate folders thing. Okay, now I actually don't remember the exact command to commit and push everything, so I'm just gonna press Control K and we're gonna ask Cursor to write the command for us. Okay, git add everything, then here's the commit message and then git push origin main. All right, here we go. Now if I go back to the game center and refresh, we see all of these files over here in our main branch. Now I'm gonna do two things and I'm gonna ask it to create two new branches which are gonna be dev A and dev B. All right, so here's our command, git branch dev A and git branch dev B, and then we're gonna push both of those to origin. All right, now if we refresh, we see three branches. And we see that they are currently the same as the main branch. So if we go back to our diagram, we've essentially set this up right now. What we need to do is create these folders, which are gonna be the work trees, and then we can use the agents within those folders. All right, so we're gonna check out branches dev A into a new work tree folder called game center A, and then do the same for branch dev B. Okay, git work tree add, and all right, here we go. So now we should have two new folders up here in the GitHub folder. So here we see game center A and game center B. So these folders, are exactly what we're looking at in the diagram here. And they are copies of our repository in these separate folders. So now what I'm gonna do is actually open that folder. We're gonna open Game Center A over here. So now we have the Dev A branch open here and corresponding with the Game Center A folder. And I'm gonna just use four fingers to swipe to open up a new desktop. And we're gonna open up cursor here and I'm going to open the Game Center B folder on this desktop. Game Center B, select. Now we are looking at Game Center B. So I have two separate desktops open, one with A and one with B. Now one thing to keep in mind is that for each of these folders, we're gonna have to open the terminal and install the dependencies. So I'm gonna run npm i over here, as well as in this one. Also, since we're gonna run the application twice on our computer, we're actually gonna to wanna to change the port that the B one runs on so that we can run it in parallel at the same time so that when the agents make changes, we can easily go to the browser and see that those changes meet our requirements. So for A, I'm just gonna run npm run dev so that we have the application running. Here it is. And then I'm gonna flip back over to B and over here, I'm actually gonna ask the agent to change the port number because I don't remember exactly what the command is. 
So let's just say, please use port 5175. Okay, here we go. Now we can do the same npm run dev, and we should have it on 5175. All right, so we have A running on 5173 and B running on 5175. So right now, both of these have the same exact code, but we're about to start using the agents to modify that code and implement two games in parallel. So over here in Game Center A, I have the composer open and I made sure to select agent for the best results. And I'm gonna ask it to implement the memory game for us. Please implement the memory game and make sure that it is integrated with this central file. Okay, we'll make that request. And while it's working, I'm gonna flip over to the other desktop. We're gonna open up that file over here. But remember, this is on a separate folder on my computer. so none of the changes that the other agent is making are going to be visible here. So here we're going to ask, please implement the snake game and make sure that it is integrated with this central file. All right, now let's flip back over to the other agent. Looks like it's still finishing that up. Okay, and now it looks like it's done. So let's take a look at the browser and we'll click play. Cool. So we got a basic memory game working here. Maybe it's not working quite perfectly because it seems like there are multiple copies of certain icons, but that's fine. We can iterate on that. But right now we don't have the snake game on this branch. Now if I flip back over to agent B, looks like it's finished up making snake. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to see if snake works here. All right, there we go. So now we have two games that got implemented and we built both of them at the same time. What's left to do now is make sure that we can merge these branches back to our main branch so that we have all of the code in the same place. So first, let's go ahead and accept all the changes. Then I'm going to open up a new terminal and just make sure that we commit and push all of this. Okay, I tried to push that, but apparently I have to set up the upstream origin. So let me go ahead and do that first. And now I'm gonna go ahead and make the push with everything in it. Okay. And then we'll do the same on this agent. I'll copy that command and we will push everything. Okay, now when we go over to GitHub, we automatically see that there are recent pushes to these additional branches. So we can go ahead and compare. And looks like in this case, we're able to just merge dev B into main. We can actually review the code, but I'll go ahead and make the pull request and we'll merge it. Now I'm gonna also open a pull request for agent A and the dev A branch, but it looks like in this case, we can't automatically merge it. And the reason is there are files that both of the agents modified in their separate branches, which if we were trying to run this in one folder, it would immediately make a huge mess, but because we ran it in separate folders and we had them work in parallel, you know, they were able to make these changes on their own, and now we're gonna have a structured way to resolve these merge conflicts. So what I'm gonna do now is what you would typically do when you run into this situation in Git, and I'm going to merge the main branch into my dev A branch, and then we'll actually resolve the conflicts locally, and we'll make a new commit, and then we will merge the updated dev A branch. So going back over here, Let's go ahead and pull the main branch into this one. Git pull origin main, and there we go. We immediately see the git conflict. And the cool thing is we can actually use our agents to resolve these conflicts. Please resolve the git conflicts to include both games. 
Okay, so that looks good on the surface. I'm just gonna flip back over to the browser to make sure that we have it working. Oh, looks like we actually have it on port 5176. Okay, the memory game. Okay, that seems to work. And snake, that is working as well. All right, let's go ahead and push these changes as a new commit. All right, we made the push. Now when we flip back over to GitHub, we see that we can actually merge this pull request because the additional commit resolved our merge conflict. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge this. And now we have our main branch, which contains both of the games. Now, realistically, what I would do is I would actually just keep using these branches to keep making more and more features in parallel. And then when I have a bunch of stuff, then I would go ahead and try to merge that all together. And you know, one tip I have for this approach is to try to avoid situations where you have both agents working on the same files. That way you minimize those merge conflicts. And this is the same thing you would do in a professional software engineering setting when working with multiple developers. So give this approach a try and let me know in the comments if this actually helped speed you up. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.